Yeah, but all right, so let me repeat, repeat my sentences. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Uh, remind me <laughs> so we won't miss too much. Yeah, yeah, because when I move uh, to my office, uh, I turn off the microphone. Yeah. All right, yeah. So let me let me repeat uh, the important a few sentences. We studied max hippify operation last time. Yeah. So we can fix any violation of this max heap property. Yeah. Here, let us use one simple example to see how to apply this max hippify operation. Yeah. In this example, uh, I have a gray node node with value four, this tells us there is a violation here. Look at this triangle, this local triangle. You can see the value four is greater than 14. It's a violation. Yep, all right. So how do we fix it? Remember, I gave you the pseudocode last time, pretty simple. So you just run that code so you can find the maximum value of these two child nodes. 14 is larger. So you need to switch, you know, these two nodes. Yeah. 14 and four make that switch. All right. So after that switch operation, we get this state. And this gray node moves down and may cause another violation. So you need to keep track of that gray node all the way down to the bottom because wherever it goes, it could cause a violation. It could cause a max heap, max heap property violation. So now you check this current local triangle again, and then you see another violation. So you need to apply our max heapify operation another time to fix this local triangle area. After another operation, so now you have this one, this state, but this time, because you already reached the bottom, right? You already, your local triangle already touched the bottom. That means that's the last one, last local triangle you need to look at, you know, related to that gray node, node number four, that gray node. Yeah. So after that, you can, you can say uh, we fix all the possible max heap property violation caused by that original gray node. Only related to that particular one. Okay, yeah. So here I emphasize this point because you may have violation in other place, right? Related to other node, but related to this one, yeah, we fix it. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so you see this uh, whole procedure. Uh, so you don't worry. So later, whenever you detect any violation, you just do this kind of sequence of operations. Then you fix. You fix all the possible violations with respect to one particular node, starting, yeah. So you start start with one particular bad node, right? Yeah, all right. Next, after that, next one, we need to study another important uh, process, yeah, here, 
because it's bigger than operation. Yeah. So we call it process. It's a pro building a heat process. Yeah. When we start with any given array, usually it's not a max heap. Yeah. In general. Yeah. So the first thing we need to do, we want to build a max heap. Yeah. Here, let's assume we only look at the max heap. It, uh, case. So how to build a heap? Just apply that max heap file operation again and again. Based on some order, yep. then we can build that heap, build a max heap. Okay. So let me run another simple example to show you how to build a heap. So this is an original array. Yep. So you may have a lot of max heap property violation many places in this array so we want to run that max heapify operation in some special order in some special order after we finish that sequence of max heapify operations we will get a max heap that process, yeah. that process. Yeah. I just use one example to show you that process. Yeah, so you you get the idea. All right. First, we just arrange the array elements based on the given order. Yeah. So this kind of we call the near complete binary tree. Right. Yeah. Near complete binary tree. Yeah. So the first, second, third, we just arrange the given elements in the natural order. Okay, yeah. So this order, we just use the natural order. So nothing to do. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So here, but now because we we expect we have many max heap property violations. So we need to fix all of them, but we want to follow, we want to follow a good order. Now, here, the order is important. The order is important. Now, the reason is simple, because if you do not follow a good order, then Think about this situation. The first round, you fix many violations, but the second one, you fix another, a few violations, but you may mess the part in the first round. Think about that possibility, okay? You, you don't want that happen. So you, so you want to follow good order, so you, you do not mess up, okay? Yeah, all right. So the order is bottom up. The order we use bottom up. Bottom up order. Okay. Yeah. So we start from the bottom. Yeah. From you know the last possible local triangle. Yeah. But here, although it's not a triangle, because there is no right child. No right child, but so we just you know treat that as an incomplete triangle. Okay, yeah. So first, let's check any violation here. No violation, right? So this uh, this incomplete triangle has no violation. So we move to the next one. Move to its left. Look at this. Look at this local triangle. We detected there is a violation. So we run our previous max hippify operation to fix it. Okay? Yeah. All right. After that operation, we fix it. So we should move upward, bottom up, one level up, upward. So you want to look at this local triangle. All right? Yeah. 
So we detect another violation. So we need to swap these two nodes to fix it. Yeah. So after that, you move to its left, same level, but to its left, local triangle. Yeah. So you see another violation, that star means one violation is detected. Okay, so we swap these two nodes and all the way down. Remember, after you swap one here, you also need to swap node one and node seven all the way down to the bottom. All right, yeah, after that, so you, you fix all the possible violations caused by that original bad one. Okay, all right. After, so you finish another level. So you move, move up another level. Yeah, another level. So this time you detect, you find another violation. Yeah. Swap, but you need to move all the way down. All right, yeah, all the way down in this path. Node four, node value four. All right, yeah. After the, yeah, so this is one level down. Okay, yeah, but still it causes another violation. So another level down, and uh, finally, when it reaches the bottom, then we complete that particular sequence of max hippify operations. Okay, yeah. But we already reached the top when we, after we reached the very top. So we finish all the possible max heap, uh, max heap property checking. Yeah. All, the, all the checking. All right, so let me look at the Nor's question. How do we know which one we are swapping Oh, which one was swapping? I just remind you, you go back to the pseudocode we talked about last time. Yeah, last time. Remember, so we, we, we use the largest variable, the parent value compared to its left child value. If it, you know, if the left child node has larger value, we put its index in the largest variable. How to do it, answer your question, we go back to our max hippify operation, the pseudocode, yeah, pseudocode. So, so we, we, we have that detail. Here, like three and a 10, three and 10. Wouldn't the nine work, right? Uh, right, three and 10, based on our pseudocode, yeah, so here. Because, yeah, let me go back to the previous slide. I think you talk about, you talk about, this place, okay, this place, okay. actually this place. So three and a nine, three and a 10, we pick three and a 10, not, three, right there. And a not three and a nine, yeah, because based on our pseudocode, this one has larger value 10, the nine smaller value, so our max hippify operation tells us we should select the larger one and do the swap, okay? Uh, the largest among the three, the largest value among all the three. Yeah, so that, so yeah, because yeah, because it already uh, we have a few days since our last class. So many of you, I think not just the more, most of you probably couldn't remember the details of that max CP file. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's normal, not just you. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, at this point, so if, now for other students here, for other students, if you couldn't remember the details of that maxi power, you just pause this video here, then you go back to look at the notes of our last lecture, especially the pseudocode part. So you will see that detail, okay? So we don't worry, so nine and a 10, so we will always pick the larger one, okay? 10, not nine. And here also, 
we pick 16, not 14. Okay, 16, not 14. Yeah. All right, good. Yeah. So you uh, you address the question I feel many other students may ask. Yeah. All right. So after this, we have a max heap. Yeah. The given array, whatever it is, after we run this bottom up type max heapify operations, when we reach the top we construct a max heap data structure, all right? So it's ready for sorting. Yeah. Before you do heap sort, you need to build a max heap first, okay? Yeah, so our sorting algorithm relies on this data structure. Yeah, so it's important, yeah. But we need to estimate how much is the cost building cost so the next issue the building cost is important estimate because if this building cost is too expensive then not worth it okay yeah for example if it is as bad as big theta of n square then we need to throw it away okay yeah not yeah let me put not yeah because if if some students see then they, they may they may use this wrong wrong information right yeah yeah not uh wish yeah actually we wish not this bad okay we wish not this bad if this bad as bad as big theta of n square then it's useless because the cost, building cost is too high. Yeah, so if in that situation, we just forget about this, this approach, okay, yeah. Yeah, so our next topic, we need to estimate the building cost, yeah. The good news is, the, the good news, yeah, I can write in this way, the building cost is big theta of just the n, <laughs> no square. That's acceptable. That's pretty fast. Yeah. So we can take it. Yeah. But why it is big theta of n? Then I need to give you the details. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we've finished finish this part. So then part B. In order to understand why it is big theta of n, we need to learn some basic information. So this is B.1. Heap nodes in each level, we need to learn this information first. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of things, a lot of discussions before we can estimate the building cost. First, number of leaves in a heap. Yeah, so this part relatively hard. So, yeah, I want to explain as clear as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, for this part, uh, I may give you one or two questions in the final. Yeah. So I hope you can understand this part well. All right. So number of leaves in a heap. Yeah. How to estimate? How to calculate, yeah, given an array with n elements here, okay? Then we build a max heap. Now, I ask you this question. How many nodes are the leaf nodes? The number of leaves, leaf nodes, yeah. First, you know the meaning of leaf nodes, right? What is a leaf node? A node without any child. Yeah, leaf, you, you look at a tree, okay? What, what property a leaf has, we just look at a typical tree, a leaf here, we, you know, in our, our computer science, the leaf node, that means that node does not have any child. We call the leaf node. Otherwise, 
it's internal node. So two types of node. One is internal. Another is leaf node. Internal node, it should has it should have at least one child. Okay. Yeah, not necessarily two child nodes. At least one child node, internal node. So leaf node people also call external node. The same thing. External node, the same thing as the leaf node. Yeah. All right. So in this example, you can see all the leaf nodes. What are all the leaf nodes? Yeah. Node with our children. Yeah. All right. So here, three here and a two here. Do not forget these two. Okay. So when you count, so do not forget those two. Yeah. Also, yeah. They do not have any child node. All right, to characterize all the leaf nodes, we look at the parent-child relationship, the typical parent-child relationship. Okay, yeah. So if a node has one child, then we know it cannot be a leaf node. Okay, yeah. All right. And we know the relationship between parent-child Actually, here, we only look at the left child, not right child, because the wrong, not right child, sometimes they may not be available, right? Right child may not be available sometimes, but left child, if a node is not a leaf, it must have a left child. For that reason, so we just, here we, should consider left child node. Yeah. So the relationship bear indices I and a two I, that relationship, I and a two I, okay? Yeah, so if two I, this index falls in certain range, the range, what is the range? The valid range for that two I, if it is out of bound, then there is no such child, right? Out of bound. Out of bound means greater than, what is the bound? Bound is between one and n, right? Not, not zero. Remember our heat. We cannot use position number, index number zero. So we, we have to start from one. So the range is between one and n. Out of bound, that means greater than n, right? Yeah, out of bound, greater than n. Okay, yeah. So if some, so if you look at for a given node, a of i, if you double its index to i, and a two i is out of bound, then you can say the original node is a leaf node. How about that? How about that observation? Okay, here, let me interpret. What's the meaning of no child property? Okay, no child property for a given node. Yeah, so it means this condition. Yeah, it's corresponding index i should be less than or equal to n, yeah, because it's a valid node, right? A of i, it is a valid node. So i should be less than or equal to n, but 2i is strictly greater than n, out of the range, out of the, you know, the range for a valid index. So this inequality, describes the final range for leaf indices. Leaf indices, I, here we are talking about leaf nodes. Those indexes corresponding to leaf nodes, 
this inequality, okay? This inequality gives us all those indices for the leaf nodes, okay? But we need to simplify it. So let's simplify it, yeah. Index range, yeah. So one side, n over two, strictly less than i, strictly less than i, but n over two may not be an integer, okay? So we should, we should use integer expression here, yeah. Smallest such i that is strictly greater than n over two. So what's that integer? Strictly greater than n over two. What's that? Yeah. So that is n over two floor function plus one. Okay. So we should not use seeding function. Yeah. If some of you, if you use seeding function, then we cannot get i strictly greater than that seeding function, right? Yeah, because sometimes it equals the seeding function. So here we use the floor function and the plus one. That is our i. That is our smallest i. Okay, so that's our smallest i. What is our largest i? Largest i is that n. N is our largest i. Smallest i, this one, largest i, n. So you know the range for the leaf indices, right? Range for the leaf indices. So what is the range for the, this is the range for the leaf indices. Okay, yeah, all right. With this range, can you give me the number of leaf nodes, how many, integers fall into this range. Can you tell me quickly? Yeah, in this range, how many integers? How many integers? All right, yeah. Quick answer, any idea when you see question? Yeah, because in our Everyday life, we we may need to figure out this kind of questions frequently, right? So you're yeah, given a range for some integer variable, but you need to tell people how many numbers fall into that range here. Okay, yeah. All right, so because I do not see your answer, yeah, I, I cannot wait too long. So let me tell you, how do I find this that answer? Use n, yeah, the upper bound of that range, use the n minus, do not minus the lower bound, minus the number that is one smaller, the immediate previous number, yeah, minus n over two floor function, one smaller than the lower bound. The number, just the one smaller than the lower bound. That is the total number of integers in that range. Oh, yeah, so Madison, Madison, right? 10, yeah, you use, use our new method. Madison, 10 from six through 10, use 10 minus five, do not use 10 minus six. Because if you use 10 minus six, you exclude six, but we don't want to exclude six, right? Yeah, we want to include six. So you use 10 minus five. Then when you count from six through 10 inclusive, there are five numbers, not four. Yeah, good, yeah. So you can see this little thing, you should be very careful, all right? Very careful. <laughs> all right, so let's look at the answer. n minus floor function of n over two. Okay, yeah, so that's the answer, yeah. But this answer, if we want to simplify a little more, that equals the seeding function of n over two. Seeding function of 
over two. This formula is given in the appendix of our textbook. It's a formula. We can prove it. If you, if you want to, you know, try, you, you can prove it. You consider n is even and odd, then you can prove it. Yeah, here I do not want to spend time to prove this formula. Okay, yeah. So the formula is correct. So you have two ways to write this formula. All right, yeah. Yeah, so the, the formula is given in the textbook, page 477. Okay, yeah, so that's this formula, yeah. All right, now the answer, yeah, number of leaves, you have the answer, okay, yeah, all right. But next, that's not enough. Leaf, that's just the one level in the heap. We want to consider all the possible, possible levels, the nodes, possible levels. But this time, we won't use the we won't use the level concept. We want to use the height concept. Yeah. Why not level concept, height concept? Yeah. The reason is simple. Yeah, let me go back to the previous slide. Yeah. Previous slide. Yeah. Let, yeah. Oh, yeah sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah just the, this slide. This previous slide. You can see these two groups of nodes are all leaves but they are at a different levels right yeah this the level this level that level they are at different levels if we use level number they are at different levels so that's not convenient right so we should not use the level concept here yeah we want to use the height concept Height concept, okay, yeah. Hi when we use height concept, we imagine there is a ground ground level. This is a ground, okay, but that one also ground, yeah, because those levels they also they touch the bottom, right? So that's the ground. So we look at how close these nodes to the ground, okay, yeah. So we do not look at from top. If we look at from top, the root, root level corresponds to level zero, all right? The next level, level one, and so on, okay? So level two right? and level three, but you look at from, from top. Now we want to look at from bottom. From bottom, all these leaves, they have height zero, H equals zero, height zero, okay? Yeah, very bottom. Then another level up from bottom, another level up, height equals one, height equals one, and so on, okay? Yeah. So in this situation, the height concept is better to describe the nodes we want to consider. Yeah, so let's, the next, Let's look at the number of internal nodes with height one. Okay, the height one. So you this time you need to tell me how many nodes have height one. Okay. So our previous slide we calculate how many nodes with height zero. Now height one. Yeah. Can we use the similar way to find the nodes with height one? All right, yeah, here, the nodes with height of one, these nodes, height of one, okay? Can we quickly characterize all the nodes with height one? Or can we find the range, yeah, range, range for the indices of those nodes with height one? Yeah, if you, can figure out the range, you can use the same way we used it before to find the number of internal nodes with height one. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's modify our previous method. 
yeah, we need to change slightly. So, yeah, before we before we go there, let's look at the simple question: number of internal nodes, number of internal nodes. Okay, yeah, because among total number of nodes, only these two types: internal nodes and the leaf nodes. And we know the number of leaf nodes. So the complementary part, that's the internal nodes, right? Yeah, yeah. Total nodes, N. And number of leaves, N minus flow of N over two. The complementary part, number of internal nodes, flow function of n over 2. Right? Yeah. Simple. Yeah. But that's number of internal nodes with all heights. Right? Yeah. Here, this number contains those internal nodes with all heights, including one, one, two, three, and so on. Okay? All heights. Thus many. All right. But now, we only want to look at those nodes with height one. Yeah, height one. Yeah, yeah. All right. This time, we need to look at the range. What are those nodes with height one? How do we characterize their indices? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So their children are leaves, right? Yeah. This is the key property we observed. Their children are leaves. They had one. Their children have height zero. How about that? Their children have height zero. Very natural. Yeah, height one. Okay. Yeah. So that means their children, their children, how do we represent the in? This is of their children, 2i. Yeah. yeah. Here we just we only need to look at their left children. Yeah. We ignore right children. We only look at the left children. Because the left children, they are better representatives than right children. Okay. Right children sometimes available, sometimes not available. Yeah. Left children, if they have children, left children always are available. Yeah. So we use left children. 2i index. 2i index must fall into the leaf range. And this is the leaf range. So we use the, you know, leaf range inequality. Then to simplify it, we want to see the i range, not 2i range. So we do division by 2, both sides. We get this we get this inequality. Yeah. This inequality, two bounds, upper bound and lower bound, but upper bound easy to see, right? N over two, but we want to get the integer expression, so we use flow function, N over two and the flow function. But the le uh, lower bound, may not be that easy to see. Yeah. Can you see the lower bound? Not, you, yeah. Actually, <clears throat> the lower bound, we should use this directly. Because we do division by two. Yeah, this is division by two. Then you take ceiling function. Yeah, yeah. So the straightforward representation is the seeding function representation, but it's we feel too complicated. We want to simplify it. The simplification formula is this, yeah. but you need to prove it. If you want to get it rigorously, you need to prove it. Yeah. Here, I cannot prove it. I want to save time. Yeah. I'll just let you know, if you want to prove it, you need to consider n 
mod, yeah, division by four, mod four with remainders, four different remainders, zero, one, two, three remainders. So you need to do discussions, okay? For these four cases, and you check, for these four cases, this formula, always correct, okay? Yeah, so after that, then we can simplify the lower bound to this formula, okay? Yeah, all right. Now, assume this is correct, yeah? So the next question, can you tell me how many integers fall into this range? Using our same way, yeah. Flow of n over two minus flow of n over four, right? Yeah. 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 One before lower bound minus that number right before the lower bound. Yeah. So the answer is this one. Okay, this many. This many nodes have height one. Yeah. But here, another thing I want to talk about, when you get this formula, this time, it's not strictly equal, it's less than or equal to ceiling function of n over four. Because when you consider n mod of four with four different remainders, for some of the remainders, this inequality, we, do not, we cannot take the equal case. We have to take the strictly than case. Not always equal, sometimes equal, sometimes not equal. Yeah. So we have to use less than or equal for height one. For high zero, strictly equal, okay? Only high zero, our simplification formula strictly equal. Yeah. For high one, less than or equal, okay? So that's small difference, yeah, small little difference, yeah, all right. After this discussion, after this discussion, yeah, yeah, all right. Our next question, yeah, because that's just height, we want to get a in number of internal with any height, all possible heights, okay? All possible heights. We want to write a general formula, okay? Yeah, so we need to find that formula because after we find that formula, then we can estimate the building cost for a max heap. How much is the building cost of max heap? Yeah, so we we can get that. Okay, all right. So generalize the previous result for height h. This time, yeah, not just one. One, two, three, height h. Yeah. So let's do the generalization. Yeah. Number of leaves. Let's look at the rules for all those formulas. Number of leaves. This is the formula for number of leaves. Yeah, that corresponds to high zero. Yeah. Next, for high one, what's the formula format? For high one, yeah. look, at that's the range. Then the number, this is the number, okay? If you compare this one, high zero version, high one version, can you see some rule there? Right, some rule there, right? Yeah. Now let's assume height is h. Yeah. It we use variable little h for the height number. Yeah. Can we guess the height h formula in this format? Yeah. The range, we can also describe the range. Okay, the range and height. All right. The range is yeah, look at that, h plus one. n over two to the 
h plus one, one plus one, two. Yeah, here, the left bound, one plus one, two. So we should use h plus one in the left bound. The right bound here, n over two, two to the first, right? That's the h number, two to the first. So here we should replace that one by h, two to the h. Yeah. So that's the range for height h nodes. Height h nodes, all right? Okay, yeah, all right. Now we can do the counting, the counting. The right bound, right, the one number less than the left bound. Yeah, that's this expression. One number less than the left bound. Okay, yeah. So we get the height h formula. This many nodes with height h. Okay, yeah. So after all these formulas, now we can estimate the building cost of a heap. Yeah. So we need to do some math calculation to find the building cost. Okay, all right. So let's start the estimate. Combine the cost of all heights, right? Yeah, the leaf, le uh, leaf nodes, we do not need to do max heapify operation, right? Yeah, because when a node reach the bottom, there is no violation. Yeah, when the nodes reach the leaf level, yeah, leaf ground level, yeah, no violation we need to worry about, right? So we, we just skip all the leaf nodes, okay? So we only need to consider the internal nodes with height one, two, three, until we reach the root. Yeah, all right. Cost of max hippify for all nodes of height H. Yeah, height H, okay? Yeah, so what's the cost? Yeah, how many? Swap operation, yeah. When we look at the cost, let us use the number of swap operations. Okay, yeah, all right. Yeah. All right, so, yeah. So here, remember the, here, the meaning, number, number of, yeah. of the nodes, yeah, all the internal nodes, but I can skip internal nodes with height h, with height h, greater or equal to one. Yeah, so we know it's in their internal nodes. That number actually less than or equal to this ceiling function, right? Remember? Yeah, we cannot use equal to be rigorously represent that number. That number is less than or equal to that the ceiling function. Yeah. But the difference is less than one. So, so our estimate is very good. So this estimate, very good. Because the difference is left that the difference less than one, okay? We just throw away some fractions, some small fractions, okay? Less than one, yeah? And this many nodes, and each one, each one, the number of swap operation, H, swap operation, right? H swap operations. Yep. Height one, we need to do one swap operation. We reach the bottom, right? It's just one swap operation. H equals two, we need to do at the most two swap operations. 
to get to the bottom and so on. So H, we need to do H swap operations to get to the bottom, okay? All right, so here we use big O, yeah, big O, yeah. it's okay. So that constant is one, yeah, but we just use the asymptotic notation here. So big O, okay, big O of H, yeah. all right. Now, in our estimate, all right, yeah. So here, uh, the height range from one to flow function of log of n. So this is the root, the height of the root, okay, of the root, flow function, okay flow function of that root, yeah, log base two of n, okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, so we skip the leaves, yeah. Then look at the formula to estimate the total cost, total cost for all possible HP5 operations, all possible HP5 operations, yeah. So the summation, Yes, the summation, all right? Yeah, it looks a little complicated, yeah. All right, yeah, but we can use inequality to remove ceiling function, yeah. So in this new expression, the ceiling function is gone, okay? The ceiling function, relatively hard to handle, yeah. Is there a difference between log and log? Oh, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. Jeanette, yeah, your question, log, when we use log of m, we mean the base is a, yeah. So this a is, un, you know, unknown, yeah, unknown. And uh, in this class, this a actually greater than one. Yeah, in this class, we do not allow a less than one, okay? We do not allow a less than one because then it's it's a negative number, yeah. But in this class, if we use LG, we mean log base two. Yeah, just, uh, you know, uh, shortcut, shortcut notation for log base two. For LOG, so we mean some general base A, A greater than one. Okay, yeah, all right. All right, yeah. So now estimate, I want estimate the summation. Yeah, a little complicated, yeah, but we can simplify it, simplify it to some relatively simple expression. Yeah, all right, all right yeah. The first term and there is a second term, right? Yeah, we split. There is a plus sign. So we split into two summations. Yeah. So the first summation, yeah, we can put things inside the capital O. Yeah. So we multiply H inside capital, capital O. Yeah. All right. So the second is that. All right. Yeah two summations, yeah. all right. Yeah. So let's estimate the second summation first because same, second summation easier, easier than the first one. So let's do the easier one first, okay? Yeah, the easier one, yeah, because this is an integer, we treat as a special integer. So that integer here, we remove the flow function yeah, the difference is small, so we can get that. So what do you get actually big O of log square? Big O of log square, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's the second term. You will see the second summation much smaller than the first one. So we, can, we will ignore the second one. We will ignore, too small. The first one is the dominant term. So we will keep the first summation. Yeah. Drop the second summation. All right. So before our break time, so let's finish the let's finish the first summation. So when then we take a break. Yeah. 
because after this building block, this one, uh, we have one top small topic left, but that topic should be pretty pretty small, so we can finish it quickly. Yeah, that one. All right. Yeah. So let's estimate the main term. This one. All right. This one, because that n, remember that n is constant here. In this summation, that n never changes. n never changes. We can take it out of the summation. Okay, so we only do summation with variable h. Yeah, h terms. Okay, all right. Then this upper limit, upper summation limit flow function, not easy to handle, so we want to change it. We want to make it larger to infinity, larger, yeah. So we just estimate this summation, but without log. After we enlarge the upper limit of the summation, then there is no log to worry about, right? Okay? So, yeah. So let's look at this new summation. So our next thing is we want to estimate this new summation. Yeah. All right. So here, yeah, this is the explicit formula to write a new summation. Yeah. Here, I show you how to find this summation. We need to apply a little trick. Yeah. Little trick. So we can find the value of this summation. Yeah. All right. Calculate the summation. Our S. Yeah. All right. Here, the, the trick is, look at all the terms. They have a good property. The property is the denominators all have power of two. Power of two, yeah. So then we multiply both sides by two, yeah. So the new 2s has another expression, the denominator also power of two. Let's take subtraction of these two equalities. Yeah. And look at the terms with the same power of two. These terms, same power of two. But the numerator difference is one. Numerator difference is one. So after you take the difference, you get this much simpler summation. And we know the summation of this geometric series is one. Yeah. Because we can apply that formula one over one minus one half for this geometric sequence. Okay, yeah, that's one. That simple, S equals one. That's simple, all right? Let's go back to the, you know, yeah, that building the heap, the dominant term, this is dominant term. Dominant term, we take that N out, but that summation is one, so we have big O of n. Yeah, I wrote big theta of, yeah, so, yeah, because here we look at the upper bound, we do not look at the lower bound. Yeah, so actually, uh, you know, uh, compatible, okay, compatible. Yeah, so big O of n, big theta of n, yeah, so we have this upper bound, all right? Yeah, so that's enough. We know this is the cost to build a heap, okay? All right, next, after we build a heap, next topic, we will do the heap sort. All right, heap sort. So then we will finish this whole uh, module five. Okay, then we move to review. Yeah, yeah. but I may use five to 10 minutes to fit, uh, finish the heap sort. So then we start review. Yeah, all right. So. Uh, let's take a break.